Jubay is a contraction of the French words jour ouvert, which means opening of the day or daybreak. It's also the word that signifies the start of carnival, a festival of freedom from slavery. In Brooklyn, the Caribbean diaspora takes to the streets in the early morning hours to celebrate this history. Juve is concerned. Juve is like a total free up of freedom, to, just like how it was from slavery time. And it was freedom. An expression came into like, wow, I'm doing anything now, I'm free. Well, Juve gives you that opportunity to be free without slavery. Once emancipation came in, which was in the 18, late 1830s, the, um, the, the slaves now, or the black people, now realizing they have freedom, came out on the streets now to celebrate. And once the whites saw that, they retreated to have their celebration in their backyards. And then that's how the blacks took over being more dominant in the carnival. And that's the truth. <laughs> that creative person that morning, it has to be on the character level that you can really enjoy what that character is doing at that time. But that is his purpose at that time, to really enjoy himself. Because it's Juve, Chalala, that each person will represent a character and it became a celebration of like freedom, but with costuming as a, as a party kind of thing. You become your own character, what, what type of costume you want to use. And most times the costumes are being made homemade by the person itself who's wearing it. If you want to spray your hair, you're not asking somebody to spray your hair. It's like I'm in the mirror with the, with the spray. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I want my pants to look a certain way, I can't ask somebody to come and do it for me. I was sitting, just get it soiled up, because I'm playing that mask. They added their creativity as years went by to the various masks, costume masks, etc. They added their imagination, like Mr. Wiley alluded to. He said, we stole, if you want to say that, we borrowed, we stole, but we added our imagination to it. It was always there. Whatever was there was there, but we just improvised upon it. And that's basically what carnival is, we improvise. <laughs> It's a carefree thing. It establishes history. It speaks on the economical, social conditions and situations of life at the time. So basically, um, that is what we want to maintain because Juve is about that. <laughs> In 
Crown Heights, Brooklyn, a group of Haitian women felt that there was a void of cultural organization in the community, so they founded Haiti Cultural Exchange. This year, they organized the third biennial Haiti Film Festival, which took place in venues across the city, giving a platform to emerging Haitian filmmakers. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate it. Haiti Cultural Exchange appreciates it. All of our filmmakers appreciate it. So thank you, thank you once again for being here for our film festival opening night. When we founded the organization, it took some time definitely to build the core group of artists that we work with. We work with a range, a wide range of artists, mostly from the Haitian diaspora here in New York. Although we've had artists come from Boston, from Canada, many artists coming from Haiti, it's it's all meant to be that cross-cultural exchange. Although I wasn't born and raised in Haiti, there's been a spiritual umbilical cord that has always connected me to my homeland. And despite my identity issues as a kid and even as an adult, Haiti and its culture is so much a part of me. But in order to really understand who I am and what Haiti is all about, I needed a search within. With La Belle Vie, yes, it's one aspect that has not been explored. Uh, in film, you, you have not seen um, people really speak about the class issues in Haiti, the bourgeoisie versus the, you know, the main population, the diaspora versus the people who actually live in Haiti. And this La Belle Vie is a real diaspora story. <laughs> When we came here, we saw what we have lost in Haiti. For so long here in the States, I tried to fight with myself in terms of being comfortable and having this certain pride saying that I was Haitian to the world, right? But then when I, and then once I got past that and I was completely confident, you know, I'm Haitian and I'm so proud, I get to Haiti and they say, Oublin, which means like, literally, like the literal translation is that you're, you're white. Can you imagine after fighting here in the States, being proud, finally proud of who I, what I am, and then going to Haiti and saying that I'm a blonde, especially coming from Harlem, <laughs> the most like black uh, neighborhood in the world recognized for its history and historical relevance, going to Haiti now saying that I'm blonde. I was like, oh, who are you calling blonde? And they're like, no, 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 no. It's not a, it's not a color thing. It's you're a foreigner. We're obviously committed to social justice issues. We're obviously committed to bringing ideas to the fore. Um, a lot of our programming has a discussion, it's discussion-based programming so people can share their ideas. Um, but we aren't an uh, overtly political organization by any means. So the ideas that come forth, the uh, knowledge that is shared is coming from the artists, and then the community of participants has an opportunity to share um, and to react and to question and to debate. And so that's kind of like the platform that we're able to provide, an open space for those conversations to happen. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me, and before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave, and go home to my Lord, and be free. I've performed this poem all over the country. Um, and every time I perform it, I, 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 I just get um, sort of filled up with, with uh, the spirit of the, and the energy of ancestors, of people I know, of our, of our culture and our story. So to me, it's a, it's a privilege, um, an incredible privilege, and I feel to be able to share that story um, is necessary for me. It's, I really feel compelled and called to do it.
would you be able to say a part of the poem here? Do you remember? Sure. Yeah. Um, look into the oyster of the Antilles and find its pearl. My eyes rest on its beauty, recalling days of tranquility and simplicity. Multitudes of places, from faces we never saw to places we never leave, displace the ancestors, but the roots are deep. In the blood, in the soul, and in that deep, freedom rings true from the sea to the heavens. Freedom is ringing in IET where generations have passed since the powerless took hold of the world's destiny and defended liberty. Far from hope, but not without the spirit of the gods, the children of Guinea were all free in the fight to save the people and the cries rang out in the air. On one hand, man of avec la vie, on the other, not but but I hope it at you. Since 2009, ZakaFest has celebrated Haitian roots music in Miami. The festival was started by members of the Zanba movement, which honors Haitian culture. In May 2015, the festival came to Tonal Lounge in Brooklyn. In the summer of 2015, the Dominican Republic deported tens of thousands of people of Haitian descent. 
This was the latest in decades of immigration policies, which many have called ethnic cleansing. In response, the Haitian community in New York City has been outraged and in the streets. Haitian Women for Haitian Refugees is calling for a boycott of all tourism in the Dominican Republic and an end to apartheid. In 1994, two years after the organization was founded, um, we met a woman named Sonia Pierre at a women's conference, a Haitian women's conference. There was a part of it that was on with folks that work with refugees. Mm -hmm. So I met Sonia Pierre there. As we worked closely with them, we learned more about the struggle of the Dominicans of Haitian descent and Haitians living in the Dominican Republic. And so um, learned how they were systematically denied birth rights. So at one point in 2005, we were asked to come down and document um, the massive deportations that were going on. And between May and June, there were 11,000 people that were deported. Hoy, donde nos reunimos miles de dominicanos de ascendencia haitiana para reclamar nuestros derechos, el derecho a existir, el derecho a tener un nombre y una nacionalidad, el derecho a no seguir siendo muertos civiles, el derecho a educar para crecer y ayudar a crecer esta patria. She thought it was important that we come and document, and it was particularly violent. The deportations are different. In the Dominican Republic, they're not like here where you get served papers and you go before a judge. You can just be walking down the road and you get randomly picked up by military, by Dominican military, and forcibly deported. <laughs> For years, there have been efforts by Dominican organizations of Haitian descent and other Dominican human rights organizations to bring some of these cases to court and, and um, human rights, international human rights platforms such as the UN, um, the OAS and the Inter-American Courts and other platforms to raise awareness and to bring justice for these Dominicans of Haitian descent that have been systematically denied their birth rights. So there were a few cases that, ha that had victories in these courts. Not only would they not comply to all the recommendations, maybe to some of them, but not all of them, sometimes none of them at all, but they would um, change their laws every time and make, you know, in retaliation to these advocacy efforts that were s supposedly successful. And they would say, well, we're going to fix it so you can't have these kind of successes anymore. And they would make the laws more, more strict against Dominicans of Haitian descent. Dominican Republic has the largest tourism industry in Caribbean, and that's because their prices are competitive. They can offer luxury resort 
vacations at a lower price than other places, and that's simply because they have Haitian labor or Dominican of Haitian descent that are working. I think 60% of the workers in the, um, in the tourism industry in the Dominican Republic are, the, are either Dominicans of Haitian descent or Haitians. And, and the Haitians typically make less than half of what their Dominican counterparts made. So that's why they can offer these vacations at such a low price. And all kinds of people from different countries go there mm -hmm. because of these low prices. And we want people to know that these are essentially blood vacations. And if you're, if you're going there, then you're supporting this ethnic cleansing and you're supporting the apartheid in the Dominican Republic.